Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for uh, number one being on the uh, on our conference call. Um, obviously, in, in Nashville, uh, I think most people are aware that uh, Brent Peterson, uh, due to his Parkinson's, is uh, going to back off from uh, coaching full time. I'll uh, still be part of the staff, and obviously to uh, um, fill in the shoes for uh, Brent Peterson for the coming year. Um, uh, I've promoted uh, Lane Lambert from Milwaukee. Uh, Lane has done an absolute fantastic job uh, in Milwaukee um, with not only uh, developing players but uh, creating a real uh, winning environment uh, down in, in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, he had a very young team, obviously with the injuries in Nashville this, this past year. Uh, he, he did a great job finishing first in his division. Uh, with a, uh, I'll say, a little bit limited roster at times due to our uh, number of injuries that we had in Nashville, and I think Lane is uh, is one of those bright up and coming uh, coaches that uh, will fill in uh, just fantastically with our staff, and uh, he's uh, he's really in the right to to uh, join us in Nashville. And I'm really excited not only for for him and his family, but uh, uh, everybody involved. Uh, we, we've always promoted from within, and. Uh, uh, Lane has uh, has been exceptional down in Milwaukee, and you just look at our roster is is full of people that uh, Lane has touched over the last couple of years. So, uh, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, the newest uh, member of the coaching staff in Nashville, Lane Lambert. Thanks, Barry. Um, first, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, the National Predator Organization, David Coyle, Paul Fenton, and of course Barry. Um, this is uh, an exciting day for myself and my family, and certainly uh, being involved in the organization, I say it over and over again uh, that I feel very fortunate every day to be able to be in the National Predator Organization and, and being able to work with people uh, like David and Paul and Barry and everybody else involved in the organization um, because of the fact that it is such a well-respected organization, but most importantly, and, and why it is, is because of the way they treat people. So uh, I've been in the organization for five years, um, and again, today is an exciting day for me to be able to be promoted and, and work uh, alongside Barry and, uh, and work uh, with a lot of the players, again, that I have uh, coached down here. So um, really looking forward to it, obviously and uh, can't wait to get started. All right. Uh, we'll open it up to questions now. If uh, you just want to say, uh, say your name and who you're with uh, with every question, be appreciated. Barry, Josh Cooper with the Tennessee. And um, how, how long has this kind of been in the works? And um, in terms of Lane, how, how do you see him sitting with your coach, with, sitting with your coaching staff, in terms of what you're going to ask him to do this year? Well, I think uh, we, it's sort of been in the works a, a while now. Uh, uh, it sort of began a little bit last year. Um, I had talked to Lane as, a, as a, it might be a possibility that um, there would be, in fact, uh, some movement. Uh, obviously, with uh, the credentials of, of, of Brent um, and Peter. Um, you know, Peter, uh, this situation this year um, has been interviewed by Florida and was in the in sort of the final um, uh, candidates in, in Florida and also uh, he's still one of the final candidates in Dallas. And I talked to Lane a little bit last year, a little bit uh, through the season, and in particularly once uh, things started heating up in terms of uh, Peter Borchick's situation that uh, I would like to have uh, Lane come up. Uh, Brent's situation was that both the All-Star break, uh, he was pretty determined, I guess, is probably the best way, um, uh, and knew that he probably would not go on the ice anymore. It's just the Parkinson is, is affecting him more physically uh, than probably he wanted to once admit, and, and he felt that he had to, to, to come off the ice. And, and at that point, we, we talked about, uh, you know, his role in the organization. Uh, obviously, he's going to be in the part of the, the, the hockey role. Uh, but I knew at that point that uh, we probably 
having having to have to add someone at that point. Uh, there was probably there was no discussion. I I knew who I wanted to bring up. Uh, it was Lane Lambert. I you know worked with Lane, uh, obviously in the organization, uh, but he's done a great job with the players in Milwaukee, and uh, he's touched so many other players in Milwaukee, and then. Uh, I think that's very important for not only credibility, but I, I think I have a very good comfort level with with Wayne or with Lane uh, in terms of um, personality-wise. I know what he brings to the table, and know what uh, you know he, he can be very effective for us. And uh, I, I felt there was no no other person for that job as it was Wayne because I think we've always built from within. Um, you know, from our not only from our player standpoint, but from our coaching staff. Um, you know, promoted Peter um, a few years back, and, and I think there's he did an excellent job on Milwaukee, and uh, Lane's done the the same thing uh, in Milwaukee as, as Peter has, and I have a lot of respect for what Lane can add. And uh, our, our roles haven't been defined yet uh, in terms of who's going to be in charge of what. Uh, that probably will be determined on the situation with. With Peter, um, if he were to get the a job in Dallas, um, then obviously they'd be looking to add another uh, staff member, and that may change the role. So we're just holding off on the on the roles right now. Barry David Beauclair here. It, how as important as Milwaukee is to you? It, it, do you see it as a little bit of a risk that that you know now you have to find somebody who's going to do as good a job as, as, of developing players for you? Well, it, it is a little bit of a risk, but I think at, at a certain point in time, and I, I talked to Lane about this, uh, and Lane can, can speak on this too, is that I, I think, you know, he's done a lot in the American Hockey League. Um, he, I think he's ready to play, uh, to be one of the, uh, the players, if you will, in the, in the National Hockey League. And, uh, we will just have to develop, uh, or find someone to replace, uh, uh Lane. Uh, he's done an excellent job, and, and we've been able to, you know, get good people, but I think our lines of communication, uh, and then I'll let Lane speak, but uh, our lines of communication from Nashville to Milwaukee are very, very open, and I think we have a, a, a real good system for developing players, so uh, we're looking for uh, uh, someone who will step in in Lane's uh, spot, and Lane's going to step into uh, uh, not only a good friend, but also a, one heck of a coach in, uh, in Brent Peterson's uh, role, in, in, in a sense, so um, I think we, we have to do what's, what's best, and we give people opportunity, and we'll have to find the, the next uh, great coach in Milwaukee. Lane, you want to? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think Barry said it, uh, you know, at the end there, it's about opportunity, and, and certainly, you know, uh, it's no different than, than with uh, players and, and players we have here. That get called up to Nashville, and and you know, and then it just opens up opportunity for other guys here, uh, you know, to get an opportunity to to improve or or, or to show what they can do, and and certainly, uh, you know, whoever my replacement is here, I have no doubt. Uh, first of all, uh, that we do our due diligence within the organization to make sure that uh, he is the right fit, and 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 then from my standpoint, um, you know, going. To Nashville and leaving here uh, was, uh, you know, was a uh, not a really a, a, a difficult decision in the sense that uh, I knew that it was the right fit and, and whether you know where, when the timing was going to be or where it was going to be or how it was going to happen, I knew that it'd have to be a good fit for for myself and for the organization. And I think that this particular fit and the communication that Barry and I and the relationship that him and I have established over the last five years, um, I just think it's a real uh, advantageous situation for, for everyone involved and, and the consistency level can stay the same and, uh, and, and so that's, uh, you know, that's really the main reason for me is it's just, it, it was a great fit and we'll find somebody here who, uh, who can, uh, Put the shoes beside my shoes, and certainly I'm going to. I can't fill Brent Peterson's shoes. Um, tremendous person and tremendous coach. Um, the first guy to call me when uh, he knew that I was going to take the job was Brent Peterson. Uh, it's just the type of person he is, and I've got a. a I've developed a real uh, close relationship with him on a personal level, and 
um, as Barry said, he'll he'll be around, and I can't wait to uh, to work alongside him as well. Coach Emily Kaplan, NHL.com. With that said, how excited are you to coach at the next level and continue the development and the relationships you um, built with some of these players from Milwaukee into Nashville? Yeah, very excited. Um, you know, it's a, it, this is a this is a big day, obviously, and and uh, uh, there is a, a certain level of excitement. It's a, it's a different chapter. I think life is about uh, challenging yourself and challenging yourself to be better and and growing. And certainly, uh, there's a lot of things about the National Hockey League uh, from a coaching standpoint that uh, you know that I'm gonna that I'm gonna learn and and and. And there's going to be things, uh, obviously, things that I'm going to, uh, you know, have to offer uh, to the coaching staff up there. So uh, it is a it is an exciting time, and it's ex- it's an exciting time to sort of continue uh, a new chapter and 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 my progression as well. Hey Barry, it's Jim Diamond. Uh, when word yeah. Brent Brent was not going to be back behind the bench, did did you guys receive a lot of interest from? coaches around the league or other coaches uh, expressing interest in the position? Yeah, I've, I got a number of texts and a number of emails, and uh, I've, been, I've been very upfront with everybody is that I, anybody who, who texts me or uh, emailed me or sent the resume, I, I got back to them and says, you know, I've already hired the guy, uh, you know, uh, in Lane, and uh, if there was uh, something else to open up, be it uh, Peter... Uh, Getting a, a job in, say, Dallas, as, I, as he's up for one of the finalists there, uh, that I would I would reopen that to, to that. But um, you know, at that point, I, I've sort of everybody's just texted me and said, you know, hey, if, you've, if anything happens, but you know, please keep me in mind. And I, I got a tremendous amount of of um, people wanting uh, the opportunity, and uh, I was surprised by some of the people. I'll, you know, they have to be a little bit confidential, but. Um, some of the, the, the quality of people that applied for it were tremendous. And uh, the one thing that was very common uh, that they all said is, uh, you know, uh, they all would like to work for the organization. Uh, the way we, we've run things, uh, they know that we have a very, uh, as I would probably say, a interactive uh, coaching staff. I, I love a lot of the staff to challenge each other. Um, everybody has a say, and I think uh, we do everything really together. I think some staffs are a little more um, uh, departmentalized, if you if you will. They all have their own uh, areas, but I think we we work on everything uh, pretty well together, and we all through bounce things off uh, each other in terms of uh, ideas. And and that's I, I know Lane has some ideas uh, that I, I said to him the other day. Is that I, I want you to think about. You know, we're always looking for change. We're always looking to get better, and uh, what we've done in the past may not be necessarily always the, the best way. We're looking for the new ways and, and, uh, uh, and new ideas, and uh, every, everybody has a, a say in our organization. And just as when I, I brought name, uh, uh, Lane's name up, uh, talking uh, about, uh, you know, would he fit in, in our staff, it was unanimous. Uh, Brent included that Lane was uh, a perfect fit for us. So uh, I think that's how we, we've operated. That's how um, our organization operates, that everybody is on the same page and working for the, for a common goal and, and, and uh, no egos, and, and that's uh, how we're going to go forward. Lane, Barry, uh, Barry Josh here with the Tennessee. And, um, in, in terms of Peter, and how close contact are you um, with him? You know where he is in that? The interview process, and also, um, how does it sort of feel for you seeing a member of your coaching tree getting um, some opportunities like this to interview for some other head coaching jobs? Uh, I, I've been in the constant contact with, with Peter uh, almost a daily basis, and uh, um, I, I know they're they're getting down to probably uh, you know some of the finalists in the next couple of days, and I know they want to do something before the draft, so. Uh, you know that's really all I, I can say about that. But uh, um, you know, getting people to uh, as I as I said to, to Lane, as I said to, to Brant and Peter, is that we want to work together. We want you to grow. I think it's uh, you know, coaching staffs are, are just like players. You want to grow as as individuals. You want to grow as a staff. You want to have common goals. But I, I want to help uh, in some way get. You know, Lane, as I said, I, I want you to come in here, and I want you to replace me. 
I want you to, to be the guy that, you know, there's no doubt, uh, you know, when my, my time comes, that one of our staff members jumps into that role right away and uh, and carries on the, the predator tradition or whatever. And uh, I, I love the, the fact that, be it trainers, coaches, um, anybody in our organization getting opportunity uh, uh, at every level in other organizations, that just tells me that we're, we're investing in people and, we're, and, and people are growing under uh, what we do in Nashville. And, and we've had some people like Ray Shero and Mike Santos uh, have gone on to, to great positions in other organizations. And, and uh, we've had some coaches and, uh, that, uh, you know, hopefully Peter gets a job in Dallas. And, and we've had some trainers, uh, you know, now I have trainers in other organizations. So uh, I think it's all about people and developing people. It's just no different than anything else uh, if we can have uh, every one of uh, our, our coaching staff uh, end up being a head coach of the National Hockey League I, I, I that make me the, the proudest uh, uh, probably of all uh, because of the fact that you know that uh, we've done things right and we've and we've got the recognition for for, uh, for doing things that the, the proper way Lane this is Jeremy at section303.com can you talk a little bit about what it's going to be like, you know, you, you mentioned, and this is in your words, I believe, is you were the voice in Milwaukee, and now you have to basically take direction in Nashville, which obviously you're, you're welcome to doing, obviously, and you're going to be excited about that. But can you talk a little bit about the transition between the two gigs of being the man and then being just an assistant? Sure, yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I did say, you know, as a head coach, you're the voice. As an assistant coach, uh, uh, you're not the voice, but, uh, the transition and the reason that this was uh, an easy uh, decision for me from that standpoint uh, I think is going to be fairly easy because I have been around the coaching staff at training camps. I've been around the coaching staff at prospect camp. Uh, I know uh, how Barry uh, runs things. I know how he operates, and I know that there's a, a lot of interaction and there's a lot of uh, consideration taken to uh, – to everything that is uh, is thrown his way. So, from that standpoint, I knew that I, I knew and I know that uh, my ideas and my thoughts, uh, you know, will be will be strongly considered. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, whether you know whether it's coming from Barry or it's coming from me or or, or whoever it's coming from, Barry's delivering the message. But uh, the entire staff is working towards that one common goal, as Barry alerted to uh, alluded to earlier. And that, for me, is the uh, is the reason that I think the the transition will be uh, pretty easy for me. Lane, this buddy, I've spread on the glass. You've had a, a long career with with several teams and organizations. Who, what coaches or GMs or, or mentors? Who are who are the people that that you look to that you've learned the most from and and have, have uh, really looked at as, as role models for the years? Well, I think that, uh, as you said, I've been uh, I've been in a number of different organizations uh, uh, throughout the playing career and, and now the coaching career. And I think you pick up something from obviously from everyone that you uh, that you work with or work for, um, you know. And, and sometimes you pick up things that you don't think you want to do, uh, you know. Uh, you don't think that's a great idea or whatever. And there's other things that you that you think are a great idea, and and you know you're gonna you're gonna use those uh, as part of part of your repertoire. But I'd have to say that uh, you know when I was playing and when I really started thinking about coaching uh, towards the later stages of my career, I really took a lot and 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 learned a lot as a player and 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 how to uh, how to uh, the demeanor uh, from Dave Tippett. Uh, I played for him in Houston before he went to uh, L.A. as an assistant coach. Uh, now, obviously, he's been in Dallas and Phoenix, but uh, just a tremendous teacher um, and, and a developer. And, and uh, in, in watching him do what he did, uh, it made me really understand uh, the importance of that side of it and the fact that, uh, you know, as long as your team's getting better every day uh, or you're working to get better every day, that you are going to have success um, when I uh, when I got into coaching, I, I think I've learned from every coach that I've uh, that I've coached with. Uh, I will have to say that uh, Claude Noel, who was uh, 
who was here before me in Milwaukee, um, is a guy that uh, that I learned a lot from. I learned a lot about uh, various things uh, having to do with the technical side of hockey, but more importantly, uh, relationships and 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 how to treat people. And and again, that that was uh, my first year here as an assistant, and it was just a reflection of what uh, we've talked about earlier with the organization being uh, from top to bottom uh, good people and 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 they have the ability and the knowledge of how to treat people properly and, and Claude really uh, really helped me with that. Follow up to that, the basically the first half of your professional career you were playing at the NHL level and the second half was more at the IHL and AHL level. And and going in that particular order, did you start looking more towards coaching when you were at the AHL and, and IHL level and, and start looking for things in that direction? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when you start your career as a young guy and and you start in the National Hockey League, uh, you know you're you know you're you're so focused on on the game and and playing the game and making sure you're prepared to play the game. As you get older, uh, you know you start to think a little bit about you know, uh, life after hockey and and you know what you want to do. And I knew uh, I knew. A number of years before I retired, that that's you know that was what I wanted to do, and that's uh, uh, you know was to get into coaching and continue to help and 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 provide knowledge through my experiences to the players, and I think that's uh, one of the things that has helped me in my coaching career and certainly my career here is the fact that I have uh, you know been able to be through uh, a lot of the same experiences that uh, you know the guys that I've coached and I'm coaching. Uh, have gone through or or are going to go through. So uh, that part of it and the communication side of it is uh, is uh, probably a strength of mine from that standpoint because of those experiences. But certainly, uh, it was later on in my career that uh, I I really thought that I uh, you know I knew I wanted to coach anyways, and, and as opposed to early on. It's been a long time, by the way. Uh, you reminded me it's been a long time since I've been in the National Hockey League. So <laughs> looking forward to it. Any other questions for Lane or Barry? Yeah, Lane, this is Dirk Hogue from On the Forecheck. Looking back on your time in Milwaukee, what would you say was your proudest accomplishment there? Well, you know what, I, uh, I knew that question was coming, and it's a great question. Uh, and, and really, the, I think the biggest, the, the biggest thing or the, or the most proud thing that I've accomplished is, is, is the fact that uh, I think we've got a great culture here. I think we've got a great environment for uh, for uh, that is conducive to having success and and winning is a big part of that. But it's the process of winning and how we get to that point uh, that I think we've created here. And uh, and in that uh, is you know the, the common denominator to that is the relationships with the, that you have with with, with your players. And um, I have. A lot of players that I've coached uh, that I talk to regularly that aren't with the organization anymore or are playing in Nashville, and I've had a great deal of texts, a great number of texts from guys that I've coached here in Milwaukee, uh, congratulating me on this uh, on this promotion, and I think that's probably the most uh, you know the thing that makes me the the, the proudest or the most proud is the fact that. Uh, you know that uh, the guys, when they were playing here, uh, enjoyed their time, felt like they learned something, and um, and respected you. And, and certainly, I think that's uh, that's probably the, you know the wins and losses. There's there's a number of things that have gone on, uh, you know, with those, and we've had a lot of success here. Uh, but uh, it's about those relationships and caring about those people. I think that uh, probably makes me the most proud. Okay. And one more. Um, either for Lane or Barry, uh, what does this move mean for the status of Ian Herbers? Is he a candidate for the head coaching job in Milwaukee? Um, I, I know that Ian is in the mix. Uh, it is, uh, having talked to uh, Paul Fenton, he's just, uh, uh, just like I, I have been uh, getting a lot of uh, Texts and, and people with, uh, who knew that there was something probably going to happen. A lot of the people that text me or sent me resumes or emails uh, and knowing the situation were, were interested in Milwaukee, so they 
uh, we're, we're doing the same thing, texting and emailing and sending resumes to Paul Fenton. So Paul Fenton's just going to do his uh, due diligence on, the, on all the candidates, and I, I do know that Ian is in the uh, consideration uh, for that. Uh, where Paul is at that process, I, I really can't comment uh, right now on that. Barry, this is, Ryan Barry this is Ryan Port from RLD Hockey. Can you just talk in depth about how important Brent was to the team's success over the last few years and uh, how different it may be behind the bench without him and possibly Peter uh, this upcoming season? Well, you know, Brent uh, you know, started with me way back in, in uh, from day one, and uh, not only has he, uh, you know, become a, a, a tremendous friend, but a uh, you know, he, he got me through the early part of, of being a a young head coach in the National Hockey League. I, you know, as a young head coach, you sometimes think that you know everything, and I found out how, how little I knew at times. And Brent was a, a great resource for that. And as uh, as time grew, I think I've grown out of that a little bit. And I think um, you know, Brent. Uh, you know, my biggest regret for Brent um, is that you know he he was a Definitely a head coach in the National Hockey League. Great knowledge, uh, understanding of the game, great passion. Um, that he didn't get that opportunity to do that. I, I know um, that he should have. And uh, I was, you know, he had some interviews a few years back. But I think once uh, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, that probably backed everybody off. Um, but at the same time, I, he's got a great hockey mind. He's going to be a part of the organization. He's going to be a part of. Uh, our coaching staff, and uh, um, in, in in some order, and and uh, be part of the organization for for a long time. So um, I, it will seem seem really strange, uh, but when I was you know looking to fill Brent's sort of uh, role, a lot of the qualities that that Brent uh, possesses, uh, Lane possesses, and and, and to me. Uh, that's, a, that's a making of not only a, a, a great uh, coach, but also a great ally in terms of uh, bringing someone onto the staff. And without without Brent and, and Peter and, and, and Paul Gardner, were, who, who uh, was with me right from the start, uh, and Mitch Corn and our staff, I, 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 you know, all the success that we've had as an organization, uh, I've had as a as a head coach, is because of the guys that we hire and and allow them to, to, to be their own individual individuals, if you will. Uh, you know, we have a real simple rule uh, with our organization is everybody's involved. We do everything together. And uh, when we walk out the door, uh, we don't have to agree on everything because uh, I think if everybody agrees on everything all the time, uh, that's, that's not good. We, don't, we would like to have some passionate discussions. But uh, when we walk out uh, to our players with a plan, everybody's on, on board, and there's no uh, there's no uh, second thought about going in a different direction. We just we get it done, and uh, I think Lane uh, will be a great fit for us uh, as uh, as Brent was uh, in 19 you know 98. Uh, this is Jason Tarnowski of uh, Wisconsin State Journal. This is for Coach uh, Lambert. Uh, Lane. Uh, moving up with uh, into working with Nashville, um, are you excited about the chance to uh, take some of the players you had with Milwaukee in their next level of their careers and work with guys like Blake Jeffrey on Jonathan Blum and others? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you know, I think that's again that's one of the things that attracted me to, to the opportunity is the fact that uh, I have been with uh, a number of these players in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, since really since day one for, for a lot of them uh, of their professional careers. And, uh, you know, that is uh, that is part of the excitement and, and, and is, is the excitement as a coach. Certainly uh, at the American Hockey League level is, is helping develop and helping these guys reach their potential and their, and their goals. And, uh, and, and to, to be able to go up there, uh, or to go to Nashville and, and continue with that and continue uh, helping with that progression um, and continue helping them reach their potential is, uh, you know, is, is, is very exciting. And it's, like you say, it's exciting because there has been a relationship established with a lot of them from day one. 